Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the modified z-score to detect outliers. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in this Excel worksheet fictitious data that I'll be using in this example. And I'll be making some changes to these data along the way to show you how the z-score and modify z-score methods react to those changes. So for the z-score, there are two different cutoffs I'll be using to evaluate for outliers and one cutoff for the modified z-score. So in total, three methods between the z-score and the modified z-score when you include the two interpretations available here. The equation for the modified z-score is in the bottom right. Modified z-score equals 0.6745, and you can see I've also entered that into cell F9 as the constant, multiplied by the observation minus the median divided by the median absolute deviation. So I'm gonna show you how to calculate this using Excel, using some functions uh, in this grid here. So let's start with the mean. This would be equal sign, average, and then the range that we'll be using, and again, it's A2 through A16. So 50.8. And I'm gonna move into the function bar, the formula bar, and copy, control C, and copy the range so I can use it uh, more easily later on for the rest of these formulas by using control V to paste. For the median, this will be equal sign median and again the same range control V enter that so the mean is 50.8 the median is 51 the mean deviation is different than the median absolute deviation and I'm not going to be using it for any calculations but I wanted to show you how to calculate it so you can see how it's distinct from the median absolute deviation so it's equal sign AVE DEV, average deviation. And again, control V to paste the range for our data. Mean deviation, 3.55. Then we have the median absolute deviation. And the way to calculate this is by using an array formula. So we have to enter this formula in as an array formula. So when I finish typing the formula, instead of pressing enter, I'll be pressing control, shift, enter all at the same time. That enters the formula as an array. So to calculate the median absolute deviation, I'm gonna start with the equal sign, then median, then ABS for absolute value, then median again, and now the range we'll be using, so control V for A2 through A16. Then I'm going to subtract that same range, A2 through A16. And then we'll finish off with the parentheses and again, before entering this, remember it's Control Shift Enter because we have to enter this as an array. So Control Shift Enter, and we can see there's brackets here around the formula, and the median absolute deviation is four. And then just to compare, I'll calculate the sample standard deviation here, and that's equal sign st. DEV dot S, and then the same range we've been using, A2 through A16. So the standard deviation here is 4.35, the median absolute deviation 4, and the mean deviation 3.55. So moving here to the left, we can calculate the z-scores for all these data, as well as the modified z-scores. And I'll start with the z-score. This will be equal sign standardize 
And this function has three arguments. The observation, so in this case that's 57, cell A2. Then the mean, and I've calculated that over here in cell F3, that's 50.8. So after selecting this cell, F3, I'm going to press the function 4 key on the keyboard, F4 key. That's going to make this cell reference an absolute reference because I don't want it to change when I autofill down in a few moments. Then we have the standard deviation, and this is the sample standard deviation, and that's cell F7 down here. And again, press function 4 to make that an absolute reference. You want to leave the A2 reference as a relative reference because you do want that to change as you autofill. Press enter. And we have 1.43 here. I'm going to autofill this down. And we have all the z scores for these data. So now I'm going to move over to column C and calculate the modified z score. So again, starting with the first record and again being aware of references that I want to be relative and references that I want to be absolute so that I can autofill this down. So I'm going to be following this equation in the bottom right for the modified z-score. So I'll start with the equal sign and then the constant which is in cell F9. This will be an absolute reference so I'll use the function for key here. Then asterisk. I'm going to multiply by the observation minus the median. So it's going to be the observation, cell A2 in this case, minus the median, cell F4. And again, in this case, I'm going to use the function 4 key to make that an absolute reference. Close parentheses and divide this by the median absolute deviation here in cell F6. And again, I want that to be an absolute reference as well. So function four. So we have the constant times the observation minus the median divided by the median absolute deviation, just as I have here in this equation, the bottom right. Press enter. The modified z-score here is 1.01. .01, and I ought to fill this down. And you can see we have now z-scores and modified z-scores for all of the data points. So how can we interpret the z-score and the modified z-score? Well for the z-score there are two different methods that are fairly popular. Uh, one is that an outlier would be defined as a z-score that is less than negative 3 or greater than 3. That's fairly common. Another fairly common method is based on the interquartile range and that ends up being equal to a z-score of less than negative 2.68 or greater than 2.68. So a cutoff score of 2.68 or 3 right, for z-score. For the modified z-score the cutoff is 3.5 so a modified z-score of less than negative 3.5 or greater than 3.5 would be considered an outlier. So if we have two different ways to interpret z-score and we have another way to interpret the modified z-score, why do we need the modified z-score? We already have two different cutoffs we use here for the z-score. Well the z-score method is based on the data being normally distributed. So if I take a look here at these data, if I select them and go up to insert and I'm going to go to insert the statistic chart and select histogram. Move over here to the options and select horizontal axis and change the number of bins. In this case you can see uh, there are three bins created but I'm going to change this to 10, 10 bins. And we can see that these data do not appear to be normally distributed. So using the z-score method with 
the 2.68 cutoff or the cutoff of 3 might not be appropriate. might not give us a good idea of whether we have outliers or not. So in that case, we may want to use the modified z-score. The modified z-score is more robust to violations of normality. However, it's important to remember that if your data are too heavily skewed, the modified z-score method may not work either. You also want to keep in mind that the value of the outlier itself affects the z-score and the modified z-score. So determining outliers uh, can be a tricky business. It's not always straightforward. And as you can see just here, there's really three different methods presented, two different interpretations of z-score, as well as one interpretation of modified z-score. So if I look at this score variable, and let's say I change uh, record five, like row six, record five, this value 47. I'm going to change 47 to 75. All right, notice how the other values change. You know, the z-scores, the modified z-scores for other records also change when I make that change. And if you look here, if we were following the negative 3 and 3 z-score rule, this value would not be an outlier, 2.99, but it certainly would be for the modified z-score method because 3.88 is greater than 3.5. If I reduce this to, say, 72, in this instance, 2.85 could be considered an outlier under the interquartile range rule, but not under the negative 3 to 3 rule. And under the modified z-score interpretation, it would not be an outlier. So as you can see, you can get conflicting results with these different methods in terms of determining which data points are outliers, if any. There are no definitive rules for selecting one method over the other. I prefer the modified z-score when I'm working with data that are skewed, or if I have a small sample size, as in this case. For a larger sample size that appears to be normally distributed, I prefer the z-score, and I usually use the interquartile range method. So the cutoff would be 2.68. So I hope you found this video on using the modified z-score to detect outliers to be helpful. Thanks for watching.